Hi, my name is Claire Russell and I love to take people to sacred sites all over the world. It's been something I've been doing for myself for many years, just feeling called to places or finding myself at places at special times or being really touched by um, natural landscapes, by going and entering um, in stone circles or going to certain traditional sacred sites, temples um, and other places. So it's been drawing me for a long time and for the last two years I've been taking people to these sites with sacred destinations. And one of the things that I found fascinating is why are we called to these places and what happens there, you know, on the deeper level, on the, the meaning level, the reason behind the sacredness, what's really going on. Um, so I wanted just to talk a little bit about that today, of my observations of myself and my experiences and also of the other people that come on these tours and their experiences. Um, and I thought I'd start with my first experience of really recognising the sacred in a place. And that happened when I went to Egypt many years ago. I went on really a holiday with a friend. Um, with maybe you know some interest in these ancient sites and, and what they're about but not really getting um, their significance or relevance to me now as something that's alive and real um, so we went there and we went we started off at the Giza Plateau and when we arrived at the Giza Plateau I went into the King's Chamber um, fortunately for us or thus it was designed potentially, there was only other, one other person in the King's Chamber. So we got to spend time there um, in silence, in stillness. And when that happened, I felt something, the stillness, I felt the specialness of that place. I didn't understand it, but I felt very grateful, very appreciative, um, and that it was a unique moment in my life and one that I'll remember. And that kind of started the whole trip to going into a deeper level and we went to the um, Valley of the Kings and the Queens and I felt very very touched by um, the goddess Nut who is the, the cosmic mother, she's the one that holds heaven and earth in their rightful places um, and births the sun every day, I felt very touched by that and then we went to the temples and in the Isis temple in particular I was just enjoying walking around the temple um, feeling and sensing the place, I was starting to feel different energies in different places. And I looked, uh, I was looking at one of the images of Isis, and in this case she had her headdress on with the sun above and a sideway image with um, the snake on either side. And I just had the thought of what would it be like to wear that headdress? And as I had that thought, I felt very real, very um, tangible, the snake energy goes straight through my third eye. Um, it was profound, it was very beautiful, and I knew that um, something had been activated, switched on inside of me. That an initiation of sorts had taken place. Um, and at the time it just completely blew my mind, because then I really, really knew. It wasn't just a, a resonance of past energy that I was feeling in these places. There was something alive, something that wanted to communicate with me uh, and that I had a connection to in some way and that was profound <laughs> as I said and then um, so I got back from Egypt and then very soon afterwards I ended up training in Isis healing as one of the, the forms of healing that I work with and that um, it just gave me so many confirmations. Um, to start with, the teacher herself never comes to the UK, she's Australian, so the fact that she was there teaching a course at that particular time was uh, perfectly timed. The fact that I was also attuned and learned to work with the Nook energies in that Isis course, um, and those were the two energies that I was to work with through the course and I continue to work with now, um, was just so perfect, so spot on, that I saw um, that that holiday that I was going on had been perfectly placed and gifted in my life to carry me forward on a beautiful journey of who I am and exploring myself. Um, and that touched me and it showed me the significance of these trips or these pilgrimages that we make to these places, that really the outward journey of visiting these amazing places 
is such a huge part of our inward journey in growing and becoming who we are. And that's beautiful, profound, transformational, um, and very joyful as well in my experience. Um, so I wanted to share that. I think that, you know, maybe you've had a similar experience and you've um, got on holiday but felt something more significant, more sacred happening underneath. Um, for other people I've noticed that they've been connecting to the land around them and maybe there's local sacred sites that you've found yourself drawn to at key times and that's been inspiring you. Um, what I realise is that, and I think more people are going to feel this actually, is a call to go to certain places, to connect with certain places, is that it's our, our soul kind of putting that, as Abraham would say, a rocket of desire into our future and what we want to create and leading us there through these amazing journeys. Um, so that's been awesome for me and it started off so many trips to so many different places, local, far, um, the really big ones like, like Egypt, like going to Mount Shasta in California, um, like going to Stonehenge, Avebury, the crop circles, different sacred sites in, in the Orkney Isles, um, Rocker Stone Circle, so many different places that are well known, but also those places which are very special and significant that we come across, we stumble upon, maybe a sacred well, um, maybe a sacred standing stone that seems to just be close to you. All of these places have significance for us and I believe there's a, a deeper meaning um, to come out. So with that said, I w wanted to talk more about why. Why is this calling happening? And um, firstly, I suppose we have to ask, who is this calling happening to? Who are we? And my understanding of us is that we're this, these totally unique, individual bundle of very beautiful consciousness. And quite a complex energy bundle, really. Because energy never dies, and we, we hear we are the, the stardust embodied and brought to life. Um, we have so many resonances through all times and all places in who we are today, now uniquely brought together by our purpose here, our... Our, um, our sole uh, mission and focus in this time for us, but also with all of these connections from many times and many realms. And in the same way, these places that we visit, these sacred sites, are also these beautiful, unique, complex energy bundles from many times and places. And it's my understanding that if you feel drawn somewhere, because it's, it's often that we don't feel we have to go to these places, it's not like that at all. It's just that you feel very drawn, you feel very interested to go somewhere. And that drawing comes from a connection or recognition that you and the site have a connection in your energy. There is something that um, resonates between the uniqueness which is you and the uniqueness which is this site. Um, and that can be very specific on going to different sites at different times, for example, the specificness of my ISIS connection in Egypt. But I've seen that there are general kind of themes or um, themes areas of why we're called, which you might recognise in yourself as well. Um, I'm sure there's quite a few of these, but I see fa four main ones that often I witness in myself and in others. The first one I'd call remembrance, and this is when we are drawn to a sacred site, a sacred place, because we're going there to remember parts of who we are, to reclaim different aspects of ourselves that we might have just forgotten, um, might be just sleeping for a little while, waiting to be activated. Um, so we feel drawn to remember and recollect those different aspects of us. Now that can be energetic for the site itself different energies it might hold um, and also it can be associated maybe even with the lineages of that site so for example Egyptian lineages or maybe coming to some of the UK sites Stonehenge for example a Druid lineage that might touch you might be um, a way into the sacred in you a way into understanding the subtle level of meaning in you and awakening it in you um, so that's one the second one I see is what I would call um, a key of transformation or a key of um, expansion that when we go on these trips for myself and for others I see that something happens there which becomes 
such a powerful, profound experience that it creates a platform for what's going to be created in the future, for a future evolution of who I am or who you are, um, a transformation, a transition, just such a key, like an anchor experience um, that goes forward with you in some way. So, for example, a recent one for me was we took a tour to Mount Shasta in California and also going to the Redwoods last year. And when we went to the Redwoods, I was deeply touched by the forest. Um, and I felt very tangibly, very profoundly on many occasions, the oneness of all the life that was there. These beautiful, huge redwood trees that bridge heaven and earth, the largest um, beings on this planet not largely sorry, tallest beings on this planet. Also all the animals, the water, the rivers, the soil, the crystals in the soil. I felt how each one was infinitely connected to everything else and that I was part of that as well. I'd been involved and invited into that web of life. Um, and that really touched me. And I take it forward as such a, a knowing inside me this oneness, of this connection to all this is, of this possibility of telepathy and communication with all life regardless, that it's, it's changed something in me, it's changed my understanding of who I am. This is one example. Um, another really wonderful aspect of the calling, as I see it, is, is nurturance. That maybe when you visit these places, you arrive and you just feel as this weight's come off your shoulders, that you can breathe easily, that you can be who you are. You can just kind of go, oh, and feel well-being, feel vitalised, nourished. There's a deep healing that happens actually because we let go of all those things that are not us, all the stories, all the things we've been resisting, and just allow ourselves to be who we are and receive all this nurturing energy. And that's beautiful. Um, I would say Mount Shasta is a place I've really seen that. For me, that, that portal or vortex, um, sacred site, mountain in the north of California, really holds unconditional love. And that when we step in or go into that whole area, it's a really large area, um, it, we're kind of going into that bubble of unconditional love and it feeds and nurtures us and allows us to love ourselves, to let go of all the judgments that we have of ourselves over others and just be that's very beautiful. And the final one of the kind of the big reasons I see for us being called to places is about service or purpose, which for me I see is very similar, you know, when we're really being who we are, when we're really on purpose in our lives, that is naturally a service to the world because we're naturally in harmonious alignment with the rest of the world and the rest of uh, reality, existence, life. And that can be also part of, you know, very specific feeling of service or purpose when we're drawn to places. For example, in um, December 2012, I was in Mexico with a, a large number of other people who were gathering at sacred Mayan sites to recognise the completing of one cycle and the starting of the next. And for me, I felt drawn there um, to honour that cycle, that my whole purpose for going there was to be in honour of all that has been and to welcome and uh, greet the new cycle that's coming in. And that was really deeply profound in many ways in which that, that came out. And there were so many other things that happened as well. But I felt that core purpose. And I would see that maybe quite a few people feel that. They feel um, drawn to many different sacred sites, creating grids of light around this planet. Um, and that for me, a term that's come, or as I understand it, is that we are becoming earth weavers. We're becoming um, these beautiful beings of light who are weaving with the earth our evolutionary path, our energetic evolutionary path, um, through visiting these sacred sites. So maybe that's a little bit about why we're called. And I would also say that on individual trips, you would probably notice many of those different aspects. Um, so I was in Egypt for 11, 11, 11. So I was very much called to be there and of service on that date. But in addition, I also was deeply nurtured by going to the amazing deserts there. Um, I also experienced a very deep, profound initiation or a key of transformation in the Isis temple at 3 a.m., uh, private sitting there. 
and I also had very kind of practical continuations of uh, my experience with meeting people there who led to such future expansion, future co-creations as well. So it works on many levels. Um, so maybe you can recognise some of that in your life. The second question is, so we feel called and all of these things happen for us there, but why do they happen? Why, um, why do we go to these certain places? What is it that's sacred about these sites? And that's a massive question <laughs> to start with. Um, but my, my feeling first is we don't have to go to these sites, but it's something we're drawn to, that actually we could continue on our spiritual journey out of a hermitage, as many amazing, amazing beings have over time. And at the same time, it's undeniable when we go to these places, these transformations take place. And what I've kind of said already, I think, what I call these places are vortexes or portals. And that is because they are, if you like, a key node, a key gateway of a very coherent, very high vibration, aligned, harmonic energy. And when we go to those places, if you like, we're bringing ourselves and all the different multidimensional aspects of who we are and bringing ourselves into alignment of this very coherent, very high vibration energy. And that naturally uplifts us. It naturally allows us to expand into those higher vibrations of us as well. And so it creates an upliftment. It creates a transformation. Um, it allows us to welcome back all of those vibrational aspects of us as well. And it's deeply nurturing. It feeds us on all levels. Um, so, for example, I'll give Shastra as an example again. Um, Shastra is known as, or talked about, as the root chakra, or the root vortex of our planet Earth. Um, and my understanding of that is that when you go to Shasta, what you feel is a deep love and connection and spiritual connection to the earth. It goes beyond what we might talk about in the root chakra on a more surface level of kind of grounding or security. It goes much deeper to realizing um, we're secure here because we are part of Gaia. We are part of this great web of life. And that is a profound gratitude and appreciation and love that flows between all aspects of Gaia all the time. So it gives us a deeper sense of that, that root energy, that loving energy. Um, so yeah, it can be very beautiful, very beautiful. And in these sites as well, so we kind of have the, what creates these vortexes is both the energetic lines of the planet, which can be called ley lines, the crystalline grids of the earth, the song lines, the dragon lines, um, that exist in many different kind of, there's different aspects of those energy lines, but most often these sacred sites, if not always, are massive convergence points for those energy lines. On top of that as well, a lot of these sites, because they've been recognised as that, they've been understood as that by our ancestors, there has been forms created there to support that energetic uh, portal in really being substantial, harnessed, activated, working at its fullest potential. So those forms are often in sacred geometry forms such as pyramids, temples, um, stone circles, cairns, dolmens, standing stones, all different ways of working with that energy and each form has its own way of working with it as well and um, it's something we explore when we go to the sites to really tune in and feel it um, and so that harnesses the energy as well allows us to stabilize in that energy and the other point is obviously so we're going to these places um, they are holding this beautiful energy but we're also going there as these amazing bundles of energy that we are, as amazing bundles of consciousness. And so what actually happens is this dance of life, this dynamic um, dance of co-creation with these places. And we often say, oh yeah, I felt called to go here. Um, and then when we arrive, you go, wait a minute, did I feel called or did this place call me? In the sense that we might feel drawn somewhere, but actually, there is like a, a, a potential like a radar signal going out from the place saying we want you to come. There's a time for you to be here. Um, and that, I was talking recently to friends who were in Mexico and they felt that actually the entire group of lightworkers who were there, of healers, of people on spiritual path, felt connected like a web 
um, of people who pre-agreed to be there at that time that was part of um, their service and their desire to come together at that time um, and that was very powerful for them. So there's that too, it's really coming to these places in appreciation, gratitude, love, open-heartedness, but also confidence and appreciation and love for yourself, um, that we are going to meet and have a conversation with these places that are as live and conscious as we are. Um, and then of course it's all up to you about how that conversation unfolds. So if you imagine even just going around to a friend's house, um, it's you don't go around to a friend's house, you don't just barge in the door, you knock on the door, you wait for them to come, you have a conversation about how they are, you um, share a little bit about your life, even if you've just come for a pint of milk. All of that will be part of your conversation because you'll want to experience, meet, learn from that person. And in the course of that conversation, other things can unfold. Maybe they have a message for you from someone else. Maybe they invite you to a dinner party they're thinking of having. And, and then the energy expands. And it's in the same way that when we go to these sacred sites and we engage in that open-hearted, empathetic, present, loving dialogue with these places, the magic really happens. And because these conversations are happening on a very sacred, very soulful level, um, something comes forward which is often very profound and transformational. So the ambrosia of life that you're gifted in these places is very wonderful. Um, the messages that you hear can be very profound and life-changing and often the meetings, the connections that go forward into your life are, are very nourishing and foundations for your future growth. Um, so I hope that's been of interest is to consider and reflect maybe on journeys you've taken or maybe on journeys you're thinking of taking. Um, and and also just to encourage you also, these places are always a light energy. You can begin those heart open conversations even before you've gone. Um, soul travel is something I find to be very beautiful and you'll find audios, recordings on my website sacreddestinations.org where you can visit these places at a distance. Um, and if you do want to find out any more about visiting these sites, please do go, check it out, be inspired, see where, where you feel drawn and why that might be. So until we speak again, thank you very much. Namaste.